Let's take a road trip up I-65 to Louisville, Kentucky. We'll arrive in the shadow of an imposing five-story structure known as Waverly Hills Sanatorium. According to the website Ghostly World, Thomas H. Hayes, a major in the Confederate Army, bought a portion of the land in 1883. He named it the Hayes Family Home and opened a local school for his daughters to attend. Doing this was due to him being his family being too far from uh, any local schools. Hayes employed Lizzie Lee Harris as its teacher. Miss Harris, being a fan of Walter Scott's Waverly novels, led to the school being named Waverly School. Like in the name, Hayes eventually named his property Waverly Hills. This was at the time when Waverly was spelled W-A-V-E-R-L-E-Y. It was only after the Board of Tuberculosis Hospital bought the land and dropped the second E out of Waverly that it took on the name that you read today. A tuberculosis outbreak struck Louisville in the early 1900s. I now know how older generations must have felt when they hear about the time they grew up in being referred to as the earlier mid-1900s. I was born in the late 80s and grew up as a 90s kid, only to hear that time called the late 1900s. Talk about making me feel old. The original hospital was opened in 1910 as a two-story building to accommodate roughly 40 patients. As cases continued to grow, expansions were done to allow for another 40 patients and a children's pavilion was added to allow room for another 50 on top of that. The children's pavilion wasn't just for uh, sick children. This was also a living space for children whose parents had TB and couldn't properly care for them. The Waverly Hills you see today didn't actually begin construction until early 1924. Two and a half years later, the new building was opened in October of 1926. The new site opened in 1926 and remained the treatment center for all TB patients for the next 17 years. During the time of the sanatorium, since no cure was available, alternative treatments were used. TB death rate was roughly one per day. Aid and and attempted treatment came in the form of fresh air, heat lamps, and positive positive reassurance. Tried to say reassurance and reinforcement. Uh, This brought about the use of the death tunnel. It was used to transport the dead out of the facility. Very out of sight and out of mind if you ask me. Uh, The death tunnel was also used as an air raid shelter during World War II. Death tunnel indeed. By 1943, the use of the drug streptomycin led to the gradual decline in TB cases. As the number of cases dwindled, patients were sent to Hazelwood Sanatorium. This saw the end of Waverly Hills being the primary treatment center for TB and the hospital closed its doors in 1961. The closing of Waverly Hills didn't last long. In 1962, the hospital was reopened and named Woodhaven Geriatric Center. Sounds like something out of a novel or a TV series, more so than Waverly Hills was. And Waverly Hills was named after a book. As the name suggests, Woodhaven was primarily used for treating patients with various stages of dementia or poor mobility and severe mental disabilities. Woodhaven was understaffed and extremely overcrowded. I imagine that led to the reported patient neglect, well, to reported patient neglect. Woodhaven was closed by the state in 1982. Overcrowding, understaffing, patient neglect. Sounds like a uh, broken record at this point. I have friends and family, co-workers past and present who have worked in assisted living facilities, uh, either as their career or just as a chapter in their lives, or, you know, during a chapter in their lives. Uh, back then, you know, I get it. I mean, at that time, uh, I'm, I'm not condoning it or anything, uh, but things were a bit different 30 and 40 years ago. You'd think by today, things would be different, but from the stories I've heard, nothing's changed. It's still overcrowding, understaffing, and just flat out patient neglect. By 1983, attempts were made to convert Waverly into a minimum security prison, but that idea was scrapped due to protests from the from the neighbors. Comedic icon George Carlin referred to this as NIMBY, not in my backyard. Maybe he went to Waverly in death to haunt the place. Who knows? In 1996, Robert Albert Haskey, 
brought to place with plans to build the world's largest Jesus statue. You know, to rival the one in Rio de Janeiro. He apparently planned to do this through donations. As you can see, that failed. No towering statues here. The project was trashed after only raising a whopping $3,000 over the course of a year. With over 90 years of activity that the sanatorium saw from the time it opened as a TB treatment center to the most recently being to it well to it being most recently planned uh, to be renovated into a hotel, it's no wonder it's considered one of America's most highly active paranormal hotspots. That brings me to my next topic. It's spirit and story time. Time to discuss the ghost of Waverly Hills. There have been documented sightings of a few ghosts within the walls of Waverly Hills. One recurring sighting is that of a woman who worked as a nurse in the time when Waverly was a tuberculosis facility. She's believed to have been Mary Hillenberg, and it is said that she hanged herself just outside of room 502. That's actually a pretty common uh, story with Waverly Hills. Um, that actually reminds me of a story from another hospital I do intend to cover in the future. Um, I'm excited about that one, uh, mostly because I actually investigated the place a few years back. So it has kind of has a special place in my heart. Uh, sorry to get off track there. Anyway, back to Miss Hillenberg. Stories suggest that she had gotten pregnant out of wedlock. That was in a time that a situation like that was, eh, shall we say, frowned upon. Another frequent sighting comes in the form of a child ghost that has come to be known as Timmy. Timmy's believed to be a former resident of Waverly Hills. That's uh, he, he and Mary Hillenberg are definitely two of the the more often heard of stories that that you know you'll see today um, i know i'd heard of both of them before i started doing research on the place and started you know looking into the different hauntings and whatnot these were two that that i was like okay i've already heard of them uh there are a couple i haven't heard of however uh back to timmy I'm not really sure whether or not Timmy was a patient or one of the many children who lived in the children's wing uh, while their parents withered away from TB. Timmy is generally described as being a ghost who can roll a ball. This is due to one of the ways the children pass the time by playing catch. Visitors to the hospital have stated that Timmy will roll a ball back to you if you roll it down a long hallway. Another not so commonly sighted ghost is a male dressed in white that walks the hallways at night. I couldn't find too much information regarding this ghost, but based on the description, kind of wondering if that was maybe a doctor or, you know, maybe an orderly that's in, in a, uh, like a residual haunt that's making his rounds. Uh, but like I say, I couldn't really find too much on this, this particular sighting. Other sightings include an elderly bleeding woman in chains roaming the halls, screaming and crying for help. Uh, there's also a dark entity that moves along the floors and walls known as the Creeper. No one's sure whether the Creeper is something demonic or torment, or, or like a tormented human spirit uh, unable to cross over. Tour guides have also reported seeing doppelgangers. The only difference with these doubles is the fact that they're uh, they've described as having black holes in place of eyes. Ghostly doctors, patients, doppelgang doppelgangers, ugh, I can't say that, and creeping shadowy masses. It's enough to make me run for the hills. As long as those hills are not named Waverly. This brings us to the end of the discussion of Waverly Hills Sanatorium. Thank you so much for joining me on this trip. I've had a lot of fun talking about the history and hauntings of the place, and I hope you've enjoyed listening. So, let's go home. Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking out the podcast. I'm still very new at this, so hopefully as time goes on uh, and I learn more about the process, I'll start adding more production to the episodes. If you have a place in mind you'd like me to discuss uh, or, you know, to cover, send me a message on Anchor or drop me a line at fullmoonemptyroad at gmail.com. 
That's F-U-L-L-M-O-O-N-E-M-P-T-Y-R-O-A-D at gmail.com. Again, thanks so much for listening. This this is something I've been kind of storing in my head for a while, just trying to decide if I ever wanted to, to you know, give a go to doing a podcast and finally decided to do it. Uh, so thanks for listening and have a great day.